Director for Biotechnology Lab in Egyptian Petroleum Research Institute and the highest head of Center of Excellency in one of the biggest universities in Cairo in Egypt, which is MSA. Also, I am the coordinator of Water, Energy, and Environment Committee in the Technical Office in the Egyptian Academy of Scientific Research and Technology in Egypt, Vice Coordinator of the Scientific Research Committee for the National Council for Women in, of Egypt. First, you should define your problem for to find a better solution. The steps to define your problem or to reach for the best available solution is you should define your problem, do brainstorming to find the best solutions, which is will be based on being in a sustainable solution, eco-friendly solution, cost effective, that means with the consumption of the lowest amount of time and energy, reaching to the best results. So, highly qualified and results and solution for your problem. Then try to implement this solution and then review your results to evaluate it and see if it is really solving the problem in a cost-effective way or not. Most of our problem in life are because of two main reasons. We act without thinking or we keep thinking without acting. What are the source of pollution all over the world now we are facing? Air, water, and soil pollution are the main source of pollution. Noise, radioactive, light, visual, and thermal are also types of pollution. All of this have very bad negative impact on health, economy, society, and the environment. The source of pollution is from industry, sector in general, agriculture sector, food waste, and also from oil, which are the main oil in the, and gas industry, which is considered the main source of pollution all over the world. Now, I will summarize most of the problem we are facing due to the oil industry, oil and gas industry, and also how we can reach for a clean fuel and use all our available resources, especially the waste resources, to solve these problems. First, what is the petroleum and how, uh, from how, uh, from which it is, cons uh, it is composed of? Petroleum is a complex mixture of many thousands of compounds. This can be divided into four major groups, saturates, aromatics, resins, and asphaltines. Saturates and aromatics are mainly hydrocarbons only, but resins and asphaltines has also, beside the hydrocarbon, non-hydrocarbon compounds like that of heavy metals and inorganic compounds, and also the sulfur, nitrogen, and oxygen heterocyclic compounds. What is the, the main problem we are facing? By the increasing of the population all over the world, which is expected to reach to increase by approximately 40% by the year 2025, and due to discount with the depletion of fossil fuels, available fossil fuel resources, especially with the high quality, low sulfur and nitrogen content crude oil, it is, it is expected by the U.S. energy information that by the year 2030, there will be a need for approximately 107 billion barrels per day. This, all of this will lead to the increase of the problem of global warming and the problem of climate change. Why? Because the depletion of high quality low sulfur and nitrogen crude oil, which is with the increase of the heavy crude oil, there will be a problem in its extraction. Will will be a problem in the refinery. More energy are required for the refinery and more expensive catalyst. Moreover, it will increase the greenhouse gas emissions in general, the sulfur and nitrogen, which in, is in SOX and NOx emissions, and also the hydrogen sulfide emissions. All of this also will lead to the acid rains. This comes also with the problem of the fluctuation of the crude oil prices because of political problems or the COVID problem. So we should search for other sources of naturally available resources for producing biofuels to overcome all of the problems facing us because of the depletion of the high quality, low sulfur and nitrogen fossil fuels. Sources of oil pollution, which directly or indirectly damage our environment, especially leading to water, soil and air pollution, is the sudden oil leakage or oil spill. Oil accidents, we, which usually leads to open burning, which also affect our climate. Wastewater effluence from petroleum industry in general, from petrochemical industry or refineries. Waste management problem from the, all the types of waste coming from the petroleum and gas industry. Tanky cleaning is another source of oil pollution. Oil sludge, oil sludge and residues, landfill. Open burning leads to what's called soil deterioration also. 
Many of the compounds of crude oil are benign, and we use it in petrochemical industry, but most of them are carcinogenic. Collectively, they are called polyaromatic compounds, which is composed of polyaromatic hydrocarbon, polyaromatic sulfur heterocyclic compound, polyaromatic nitrogen heterocyclic compound, and also the phenolic compound. Polyaromatic compounds in general are the one we are most interested in removing or destroying. They are two sources of polyaromatic compounds. The biogenic sources, which comes from the incomplete combustion of organic matters and emission source and exhaust, exhaust and also the petrogenic source, which is come directly during the formation of oil spill. Generally, polyaromatic compound persists for a long period of time in the environment and leads to, and also they are known to be carcinogenic, mutagenic, toxogenic, and have high toxicity to human beings and all, all of the living organisms on Earth. The third most abundant element or compound rich in the, found in the crude oil is sulfur compound, comes the nitrogen compound. The higher the, the heavier and the higher the viscosity and density of the crude oil, the higher its sulfur and nitrogen content. Mainly they cause air pollution because the presence of sulfur, sulfur comp and nitrogen compounds in the uh, uh, transportation fuels decrease the efficiency of the catalytic converters in automobiles, leading to the increase in tailpipe emissions of oxides like that SOX, NOXs, and the greenhouse gas emissions in general. All of this leads to have very bad negative impact on human health and also leads to hazardous soil pollution by the formation of acid rains and also poisons lakes, rivers, leading to failing in fish population. High levels of sulfate in water affect also the human health, causes diarrhea and dehydration. Moreover, high concentration of emissions of sulf uh, the corrosive hydrogen sulfide destroy building and buildings and this also may cause a sudden death when a human exposed to a, in an amount of from 1,000 to 2,000 ppm of the hydrogen sulfide gas. Moreover, hydrogen sulfide gas leads to mental retardation for children. Polyaromatic sulfur heterocycling compounds and polyaromatic nitrogen heterocycling compound, when it comes to the environment, persist for a long, very long period of time that can be used as biomarkers for, the, for oil spill or for petroleum pollutions in general. In refinery, what is the problem of the presence of this sulfur nitrogen compound? The nitrogen, when the pressure compound is exist, it delay at the end, decrease the activity of the catalyst used for the hydrotracking and the desulfurization of the petroleum fractions. So it is preferable to do what's called denitrogenation before start the process of desulfurization of the, the transportation fuels or the petroleum in the refinery process. Moreover, they are corrosive, especially the sulfur compound. So they lead to uh, 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 blocking and, and uh, corrosion for the pipelines, pumping and refining equipment. Moreover, they deactivate the catalyst in the downstream processing and upgrading of hydrocarbons. It blocks the filters of the fueling handling system of automobiles and other engines. It leads to breakdown and premature failure. More, it's very important to know that there is a stringent, stringent, stringent regulations all over the world now to decrease the sulfur content in the transportation fuels. It started to reach 10 ppm by the European Union by two, three year, year 2009, 15 ppm for USA since 2006, and ultra clean fuels all over the world now is recommendable to decrease the problem of climate change and the greenhouse gas emissions. Approaching zero sulfur emission upon fuel combustion is the, our aim all over the world now. Another problem, which is the phenolic compounds, which is a very hazardous pollutant because its water solubility is higher than that of the aromatic, uh, polyaromatic compounds in general. Moreover, it occurred in the environment by the, the natural photooxidation or photodegradation and biodegradation of the available petroleum hydrocarbons in general, especially the aromatic compounds. So we, we should have our own isolates which are capable of degrading these uh, uh, toxic compounds also. The asphalting, which is one of the main structure now and main component of the heavy crude oil, this is its structure. As you can see, it is a very complex structure. So when you, oil spill occur, you should have a microbial isolate capable of degrading this, this heavy 
or complex uh, compound. Otherwise, it will persist for a long period of time and causes it, uh, in, uh, the toxicity of the environment, toxic effect to the environment for a long, long period of time. These are also the structure of the biomarkers, like that of pristine, phytane, styrenes, and hopanes, which are found also in the petroleum hydrocarbons. It persists for a very, very long period of time, so you should have your own isolates also to degrade this and for decrease the water contamination and soil and so on. Another problem from petroleum is dust industry is the water consumption, because it is the second largest consumer after agriculture sector. For example, injection water consumption for different enhanced oil recovery technique produce approximately from 0.2 to 3.43 gra gallon water per gallon crude oil, which is called petroleum production produced water. U.S. Energy Information Administration by the year 2020 published that petroleum production produced water represent approximately from three to four times the amount of the produced crude oil. The older the field, the oil field, the higher the water consumption, it reached approximately seven to 10 times the amount of the produced crude oil. What are the contaminants coming out with this water effluence? It's high, it is highly saline. It's usually higher than that of open seas and ocean. So you cannot dispose it directly to the open streams, water surface, water streams, otherwise it will have a very bad effect to the aquatic environment. So it should be diluted before it's discharged. It will consume another huge amount of water and all of the all over the world now we suffer from water scarce. And we should save our, our own water resources. Another problem is the high concentration of ammonia, which is considered as toxic inhibitory effect to aquatic biota and causes what's called eutrophication phenomena, which kills the fish population and disturb our ecological system and destroys most of our shoreline. Heavy metals also, which leads to phytotoxicity and have a very bad negative impact on, on environmental sustainability and the human health. High concentration of dissolved organic and inorganic compounds, crude oils, dissolved aromatics, which are the benzene, toluene, ethyl benzene, and xylene, and phenols, which are known as BETEX. The 16th also polyaromatic hydrocarbon listed by the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency as priority politics. Another source of pollution for petroleum industry is the petrochemical industries. As you can see, petrochemical industry is mandatory and needed all over the world because it produces our final products like that of industrial chemicals, paintings, co coatings, synthetic rubber, explosive, resins, foams, dyes, adhesives, plastics, synthetic fibers, soap, and detergent. So we are all in the need of these petrochemical industries. But also, this industry consumes a huge amount of water and produces a large, huge amount of wastewater. It represents for approximately from 0.4 to 1.6 times the amount of the produced crude oil. It uh, uh, approximately 99.93 million barrel per day crude oil consumption in the petrochemical industry produce approximately 6,500 million liter wastewater per day. As you can see from this diagram, the uh, types of pollutants found also in the petrol chemical industrial wastewater effluent. This comes with the water scarcity all over the world now. What are the effects of these petroleum hydrocarbons on polluted, uh, polluted water? It kills and destroys our seabirds, marine mammals in general. It destroys our coral reefs and marine plants and uh, negatively impacted uh, fish population. It also uh, do a very bad negative impact on microalgae. However, you should know that microalgae are very important for life on Earth because they produce approximately half of the atmospheric oxygen and simultaneously use the greenhouse gas carbon dioxide to grow photoautographic. Huge amount of heavy metal content reduces soil microbial activity and biomass. It will affect that and destroy our shorelines and negatively impact the tourism and the economy in, the, in our countries. It will disturb the food chain interactions for years, destroy green area and the crops, leading deforestation directly and indirectly affect the humans who consume animals or plants that may have concentrated this contaminating compounds. These are samples collected in from uh, by our uh, lab members from fish, 
that uh, fish sample collected from water streams that have been affected by the petroleum industrial effluents. As you can see, it, it, ha it has a high concentration of the 16, as 16 polyaromatic hydrocarbon uh, represented by the environmental protection agency as river, um, re priority pollutant, especially the toxic, mutagenic, neurotoxic, genotoxic, and carcinogenic six-membered aromatic compounds. So as you can see and figure out now the problem of oil pollution as with the strange stringent regulation all over the world every country now have its own regulatory law for the discharge and safe discharge of effluents in, to, into the marine uh, uh, marine water uh, or, or open streams water in Egypt, we have our own law, which is called Egyptian law number four for 1994. The discharge into marine environment is not permitted except at a minimum distance of 500 meters from the shoreline, away from fishing and swimming zones, and also natural reserves and protected area. Standard limits, this table show you the standard limits of the industrial effluent discharge in marine environments in Egypt. Another problem which are, we are facing is the microbially influenced corrosion. Petroleum industry using cooling towers and also pipelines and oil tankers and and also the um, huge traps using for the transportation of fuels, all of this suffer from what's called microbially influenced corrosion in general. This is the fit definition in the degradation of material under the influence of environmental factors complicated by the presence of microorganisms. The main proposer is the sulfate reducing bacteria, and iron reducing bacteria, and acid producing bacteria. It represents approximately 20% of the total corrosion cost in oil and gas industry. SRP is the main problem because SRP can survive over a, low, a huge, a, a wide range of temperature, pH tolerate high pressure and also it produces a very aggressive corrosive gases like hydrogen sulfide and acid, 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 uh, acids. All of this, uh, for example, one of the strains is diesel vibrio, can form as much as 10 gram of the corrosive sulfide per liter during its activation multiplication period. This diagram show you how this microbial influence corrosion can occur. First, the planktonic microbial a microorganism found in the water with, um, um, which is uh, uh, found in in parallel with petroleum it when this micro uh, uh, planktonic microorganism found in the petroleum uh, flow it comes to adhere to the surface this is aerobic microorganism also and when it produce uh, when it ad adhere to the soil solid metal surface it will produce and secrete polysaccharide proteins DNA to form what's called extracellular promeric substances, which is also a good food source for the microorganism. When it replicate and the and uh, reproduce, it will produce an anaerobic area or anaerobic field in under it bit, uh, and closer to the metal surface. Now the SRB and the anaerobic microorganism can can be propagated and uh, and produced. Moreover, this will lead to the formation of what's called sessile bacteria or sessile microorganisms. This is how the mature and maturation of the biofilm occur. Additional polymers are produced as micro produced and biofilm matures. This biofilm microorganism is very resistible to any types of biocides, UV light, antibiotics, or anti and antimicrobials. Sloughing off of this microorganism can result in con the contamination of water phase, which we can see by our visual eyes, our visual observation like that of the reddish brown color obtained on cared in the water streams, but especially near to any pipelines. Another problem to be solved is the huge amount of biomass coming from the agriculture field or the agro-industrial field or the paper industry. More, for example, Egypt suffered from a huge amount of this waste biomass, 60% coming from the agro-industrial waste. Part of it is used for the preparation or manufacturing of pulp, paper, fertilizers, food, but a huge amount is still found and remains in the field. Farmers usually get rid of this by open burning, which adds also to the problem of climate change because and leads to air and soil in water pollution. As you can see, the in, in briefly industrial and agriculture sector leads and adds to the problem of climate change, and which, as we all know, oceans. 
consumes about 90% of this heat and uh, consumes about 25% of this car emission carbon dioxide. But indirectly, it will increase the acidity of the oceans and lead to less oxygen content, become warmer, and this will disturb and disrupt and, and uh, negatively affect fisher population and kills algae, do go leads to bleaching of the coral reefs and destroy our shorelines. Moreover, air pollution in general negatively impacted our immunity system. And all of us suffer now from the post-COVID and the COVID problem because all of because we are con uh, um, uh, get inf infected by this air pollution and leads us decrease its our immunity system. For example, it leads to severe respiratory problems such as asthma and the chronic and, and degraded lung function, respiratory failure, cancer, and it also affects the unborn babies. So we should overcome air pollution problem. As our aim is health and safe environment, we should find solution with, with, with some criteria decrease the cost as much as we can, make the process as much safe as we can, achieve the required success of the process or the applicable process, protect our, our environment when we apply the solution, protect the health of the personnel in the site to solve the living, to save the living organism in the site and the surrounding of the area to be cured. Here come the solution for most of our, of our problems facing is the sustainable solution coming by the biotechnology classification. Biotechnology, can be class, uh, classified into colors. Red biotechnology, which is related to human health. White biotechnology, which is related to pro industrial like that, biofuels, biopolymer, biocatalyst. Yellow, which is related to the production of food industry. Gray, which is related to environment. Green biotechnology, which is related to the application of biotechnology in agriculture field. Blue biotechnology, which is related to the marine bio, uh, uh, the application of biotechnology in marine environments. The application of biotechnology in desert, which is have the color of brown. Violet color, which is related to patents and law, ethics and philosophy concerned with biotechnology. Here come the bad one, which is dark, is which is related to bioterrorism and biological weapons. Methods for recruitment or, or for reclamation of oil spill in general is physical, chemical, which are not so recommendable because when you use chemical, you will uh, um, uh, make another type of pollutant in the environment. The most recommendable is the biological treatment. Comes from what's called biotreatment. By applying algae, which is phycromediation, by applying fungi, which is micromediation, by applying bacteria in two process, which is biostimulation by adding only nutrients and bisurfactant to make the indigenous microbial population to work to solve the problem, or by applying biogmentation, which are applying uh, uh, nutrients, bisurfactant, and also the microorganism to enhance the process of bioremediation. Another way to solve the problem for water treatment is biosorption, which depending on the application of dead biomass, which uh, to do complexation, ion exchange, physosorption, chemosorption, chelation, precipitation of the pollutants using the functional groups in the biosorbent like that of acetate, amino groups, hydroxide or thiol groups. The most recommendable method for the, uh, overcome the problem of the petroleum pro, uh, production produced water is uh, its reuse in the re-injection system for enhanced oil recovery. But you should take care to decrease as much as you can the sulfate, carbonate, bicarbonate, barium, calcium, strontium content of this water before applying or re-inject it in the, for enhanced oil recovery. Why? Because these cations and anions lead to the production of what's called scales and leads to scale formation. If scales occur, it will lead to prevent the oil and water flow. Another way is to treat this water effluent for the safe discharge on open surface seawater. These are the usual steps used in petroleum industry for wastewater treatment. First step, which is depending on the API separator to, to uh, separate oil and sludge from water. Then come the second, which is applying chemical coagulation or flocculation through dissolved air flotation or induced air flotation. They will this will remove from 70 to 90 percent of oil and grease. Then come the biotreatment, which is the third step. It will remove 60 to 90 percent of the COD concentration by applying biological micro uh, uh, treatment, aerobic, anaerobic activated sludge or membrane bioreactor. 
Final step, which is the final cleaning by applying alum, activated carbon, disinfectant, photoreactor, and other microbial treatment also, it will remove from 80 to 99% of the COD concentration. Now, the produced effluent can be reused, recycled, or safely discharged. The biological treatments have some drawbacks, which is the short lifetime of the bioapplied biocatalyst, and also it's availability to overcome the poisoning bioproduct produced during the process. To overcome this problem, the solution is applying immobilization. Immobilization has two methods, by entrapment in, non, uh, in, in uh, 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 polymeric matrix, which can be produced from waste like that of alginate uh, from agar, caraganine from algae, and also it should be porous enough to for diffusion of the substrate to the cells and the products away from the cells. The drawback is that if, if an F1 triplet method, it's the diffusion limitation and the steric hindrance for macromolecules. Adsorption or coating of microorganisms by uh, um, uh, nanomaterials solve this problem of entrapment, which reduce or eliminate the mass transfer uh, uh, problem, but only its drawback is the loss of cells. So now comes what's called nanobiotechnology to overcome the problem of pollution by way of nanoremediation, bioremediation, nanobioremediation. Bioremediation bio by immobilizing enzymes or microorganisms, nanobioremediation by applying zero valent nanoparticles or iron excites nanoparticles to enhance the rate of bioremediation. It also can be applied to enhance the rate of the bio-upgrading of petroleum distillates in the process of biodesulfurization and biodenitrogenation. Another thing is to enhance the rate of biodegradation, biodesulfurization and biodenitrogenation by also by having your own isolate capable to tolerate high concentration of hydrocarbon and also capable of degrade or desulfurize or denitrogenize wide range of these compounds which is available in the petroleum. Now come the waste management by recycling, which is reduce, reuse, or recycle. Downcycling, which is reused but usually as a lower value to produce a lower value product. For example, when you have white writing paper, you produce downcycle it for cardboard. But now the best recommendable one is I upcycle it where where if you transform byproduct waste material useless or unwanted products into new material or product with added value, the, which comes in the, under the title of uh, valorization, and by this way you can achieve what's called circular economy. The four-fact solution. This is the four-fact solution for economy, energy, environment, and waste management. Valorization of waste into nano into nano materials or uh, biofuels are, are comes in under the title of upcycling and valorization to all value added product so our our main aim now all over the world is to overcome and av avoid the production of any type of waste and to do integration between the waste integration and valorization to achieve the concept of zero waste and circular economy to achieve the three pillars of sustainability and the 17 goals of sdgs Green senses of nanoparticles is one of our goal to achieve the circular economy and the sustainability. As you can see, sustainable nanotechnology or the green senses of nanomaterials is an eco-friendly, cost-effective, locally available and socially acceptable process. It has a wide application in wastewater treatment, biotechnology and agriculture, medicine, textiles, clothing, food preservation and energy in the environment. Why biodiesel is acceptable as an alternative fuel for diesel engine? as a type of valorization of waste because it is biodegradable, non-carcinogenic, it's messable with petrodiesel, it's high, it's high lopricity, high flash point, so it can be safely stored for a long period without ex any expecting firing. Acceptable cetane number, absence of aromatic, briefly, it is a large, a large closed carbon dioxide cycle, leads to decrease of 78% of the emitted carbon dioxide from petrodiesel compared to petrodiesel. Advantage of bioethanol is the same same like that of the biodiesel, but, but it reduced approximately 70% of the emitted carbon dioxide. More of the advantages is it's higher octane numbers than the conventional petro gasoline, the better the fuel, the lower the knocking and noise coming out of the engine. But one of the its drawback, its calorific value is lower than that of the conventional gasoline. However, most of our Biofuels now is produced from what's called first generation, from edible sources. It's as you can see, this diagram shows you that an example. 
one but eight bushels of corn which is an edible source which is approximately um, 203 kilogram of corn is pro will produce on approximately 22 gallon of ethanol but it can uh, give enough food to feed the person for a whole year can you see the problem now to solve this over overcome the problem of fuel versus food we use what's called second generation from non-edible sources and waste cooking oil and third generation uh, from uh, uh, the algae so we can apply second and third generation for producing different types of biofuel bioethanol biodiesel and solid biofuel now come waste is not a waste until being wasted our target, as I said before, health and safe environment and apply the SDGs. So it's time to think out of the box and solve this problem. Waste to energy is a win-win deal and reaching zero waste. This diagram show you, for example, some solution by applying lignosol waste biomass. It can be cost-effectively hydrothermally treated to take the lignin or extract the lignin, which has different application for in the as a biocide in the metal and preparation of metal metal oxide. Moreover, the cellulose and hemicellulose can be used for production of enzymes, can be used for the production of sugars to, to be fermented into value-added products like biofuels, biobutanol, and acids. And even the whole process have different types of spent waste biomass, which can be also used for production of refused derived fuel, single cell protein, for example, and activated carbon and biochar. Even metal oxide can be prepared from the spent waste hydrolysate, also can be used for a different application like that preparation of catalyst for wastewater treatment or transesterification of waste cooking oil into biodiesel. Why biodiesel from waste cooking oil is more preferable? Because it will decrease the overall cost of the preparation of biodiesel by approximately from 70 to 95 percent. And it also will overcome waste management problem. However, the process of biodiesel is suffering from some drawbacks in the transesterification process. Is the enzymes, if used for the production of biodiesel, it is a lengthy process and the alcohol use leads to denaturation of these expensive enzymes. If you apply homogeneous catalyst like acid or base, acid is corrosive and leads high temperature and pressure, and also it is a lengthy process. However, a short time process using base uh, catalyst, homogeneous catalyst is recommendable, but it suffers from another drawback, which is the washing step to uh, clean the produced by diesel from unreacted catalyst and unreacted fatty acids. So with the problem of water scarcity, we should overcome this problem by applying heterogeneous solid catalyst. Heterogeneous solid, solid catalyst solve most of the problems of homogeneous catalyst. It can be used for several times, but it is still expensive. We overcome this problem by applying or preparing catalyst from waste to be applied waste biomass to be applied in the process of it biodiesel production, for example, calcium oxide from different natural occurring sources. Ethanol, if we produce it from sugars or starch, it's not recommended because it is edible. We can produce it from lignosolosic waste, but the problem is the pretreatment process and the fermentation, because you should have your own isolates which have the capability of ferment both hexoses and pentoses to, to increase the yield. Now, I will summarize some of the examples for sustainable and equal treatment recruitment of biomass for production of clean fuel and wastewater treatment. These are of our lab and our my team work for, uh, for the, in the field. This, for example, is a semi-pilot for the treatment of water contaminated with crude oil, applying one of the available waste like that of corn steep liquor coming from the starch industry. It leads to highly concentration of the SFLT. It also, as you can see, it has leads also to the degradation of the biomarkers. We have also managed to produce 1.3 gram per liter by surfactant with the consumption of the polyton 2.9 gram per liter crude oil. To, so we have double impact now, clean the water from the uh, 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 petroleum and also produce a value product which have different applications. We also um, uh, applied different agro-industrial waste from food industry like that of solid waste date for enhancing the biodegradation process. We have used the spent tea waste for the biosorption of different of phenols from uh, petrochemical industrial water, wastewater effluents uh, at wide range of temperature. We have our own isolates in our lab to desulfurize the crude oil and reaching to a complete removal of 0.28% sulfur without affecting its hydrocarbon skeleton and calorific value.
We, ha we have also our own isolates, which can detoxify the phenolic produced phenolic compounds. These are the flow chart or diagram of the process of applying nanomaterials for to be coating the microorganisms to enhance the water the treatment or the diesel treatment. We have managed to prepare magnetic nanoparticles and uh, used it for decoration of different types of bacteria capable of degrading sulfur compound and desulfurize it and denitrogenize nitrogen compound and also degrade pyrene as a representative model of polyaromatics. As you can see, it enhances the biodegradation rate, double the rate, and it also doubles the rate of removal of carbazole. It can be used, the coated microorganism, for successive, four successive time. It elongates the biocatalyst time by approximately 6, 72 hours. It can be stored for at 30 days at 4 degrees without losing its activity. However, the main cost was coming from the preparation of the magnetite itself and the centrifugation to separate the treated effluent. So to overcome this problem, we, we, as we can see, this is another pilot okay, we have done in, uh, in our lab, semi-pilot for the desulfurization, the one, when we have also found that the, the operation and the capital cost of this immobilized cell system are lowered only by 18 and 7%. So to enhance and to increase the cost effectiveness of the process, we are now working and we already worked on decreasing the, the cost of the biomass preparation, the cost of the magnetite preparation by applying the hot water extract of different types of citrus peels. And we have managed to lead to approximately complete removal without of the applying the uh, um, green synthesized nanomaterial without loading the activity of the catalyst the, or microorganism or without affecting the hydrocarbon skeleton. We have also managed from citrus peels by very uh, simple process to produce hematite which has a wide application in water treatment under light, visible light irradiation to degrade different types of dyes and chlorophenol. We have managed to produce bioethanol from different types of waste, available agro-industrial waste like that of sugar beet pulp. We produced approximately 98 gallons of ethanol per ton dry weight sugar beet. Even the tomato, um, tomato uh, pomace hydrolysate have been also used for producing bioethanol and other value-added products like that of carotenoid, amino acid, inorganic minerals, and lignin, which have different industrial applications. Molas have been also used for production of ethanol. Rhizostro in our lab have been integrated for the production of biofuels and the treatment of water. How? After the production of bioethanol, we took the spent waste biomass of rhizostro to remove uh, to treat the effluent from petrochemical industries and dyes industries, it removed the dyes, different types of dyes and phenols. Moreover, the solid biofuel after the biosorption to reach into zero waste and be used, have be, we have used it as a solid biofuel with a good calorific value reaching to approximately 22 kilojoule per kilogram, megajoule per kilogram. Even bagasse from the sugar cane industry have been also used for production of bioethanol and the spent waste have been used for the reclamation of an oil spell of kerosene and diesel and the spent waste after the treatment of the oil spell have been used as a solid biofuel. We have also managed by, uh, for the same process using applying rice straw after the production of bioethanol this has been used for the treatment of effluent of petroleum production produced water. As we can see, it uh, removed the petrol, the contaminating complete removal of total petroleum hydrocarbon. It reached to the permissible limits for the safe discharge into the open sea, and also it have been applied uh, reached to the safe use for the enhanced or reuse for the enhanced oil recovery. This was also confirmed by the calculations or uh, software's calculation used for the in, um, scale tendency pre-scaling. For example, we have found that the amount of formate, barium sulfate, strontium sulfate, after its uh, application of this uh, biological treatment or biotreatment reduced, highly, uh, greatly reduced, and the amount of calcium sulfate is completely removed, so it can be safely applied for enhanced oil recovery. Why we can apply this? As you can see, the same 
images show you the bagasse after the wood that have been used for the production of ethanol. It has or the rice is true. It has high concentration of functional groups like that of acetic groups or phenolic groups of lignin and the, that of hemiacetal group of the cellulose and hemicellulose. Moreover, it's hydrophobic characteristics and the presence of channels of pores on the surface of the structure. This also for the rice straw before after the hydrolysis to be used in the production of bioethanol. As you can see, it's a structure make it very applicable in the bioabsorption process. These are the structure of rice straw after the adsorption. As you can see, the the oil oil droplets here assuring the adsorption of this pollutant on the surface of the rice straw. Even the waste biomass from the fermentation like that, the saccharomyces have been used for the bioabsorption of different uh, water effluent contaminated with dye and to, to be reused and to achieve a complete removal of this prop, uh, pollutant, we have applying the photodegradation of the contaminant and after bioabsorption, applying titania. We have also managed to do a mix of, of nanobiocomposite of the spent waste saccharomyces from the fermentation process and nanopolyaniline to enhance the rate of bioabsorption of different types of dyes. Moreover, we have used the available resources like that of eggshells, mask shells, animal bones to produce scatalus that can be used for the production of biodiesel. It, it proved the higher efficiency than the conventional Novozyme which is known to be used for the biodiesel production. Moreover, it has comparable uh, uh, efficiency like that of the chemically uh, synthesized calcium oxide. The net profit reaching to approximately $2.5 per gallon produced by uh, biodiesel compared to the applying the conventional potassium hydroxide, which is only $1.82 per gallon. We have also managed from the animal bone to produce the fluoroapatite, which has came with good basicity and good band gap that can be used for the photodegradation of water pollutants, like that of phenolic compounds found in the petroleum, petro, this, uh, petro effluence, petroleum effluence. This catalyst has been also used for production of biodiesel. It can be used for four successive times, was losing only 28% of its efficiency. After that, we used this catalyst after the production of biodiesel to be used for the water treatment in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a reactor or integrated process of production of biofuel and wastewater treatment. Moreover, the produced by bioglycerol as one of the bioproduct of biodiesel with that of corn steep liquor from the starch industry have been applied for the biodesulfurization of diesel fuel. And then the desulfurized diesel oil have been blended with the uh, by produced biodiesel applying this animal bone, so you to reach to approximately B20 using 20% of biodiesel. As you can see, it it, it increased uh, enhanced the engine performance and decreased the greenhouse gas emissions in general. We have also extracted silicates from the rice straw after being used for production of bioethanol, and this silicates produced for the immobilization of lipase produced from our own isolates, which is Pacella stratophericus. This, this uh, immobilized uh, enzymes have been used for production of biodiesel. It can be used for six successive times lo by losing only 30% of its activity. However, the Novozyme, which is the known, very known uh, bio uh, enzyme for the production of biodiesel, used for only one, process, one time. Moreover, the amount of the catalyst used by our uh, our new uh, immobilizing material is lower than that of used by the Novozyme. So it is a cost-effective process. Moreover, it is a cost-effective process. Example for another type of the sustainable biocides and corrosion inhibitors from the available resources we have managed to produce with the simple water extraction process the, from brown skin of onion or outer skin of garlic or orange peels, mandarin peels, even the henna, spent waste henna used for, in the, for cosmetic industry, and even from the um, lupin pickling, the better water from lupin pickling, all of this have been used as a corrosion inhibitor for the, car the carbon steel in one molar HCl. As you can see, see, it has a good efficiency reaching from 90 to 95% corrosion inhibition efficiency. As this is the scanning electron microscopic picture, seeing you from the highly damaged with pitted area, 
in absence of the corrosion, green corrosion inhibitor, when on the right side is the smooth surface with deposited extract, pets disappear, carbon steel is almost free from any corrosion applying this corrosion inhibitor. Moreover, these inhibitors have been used as a biocide for sulfate-reducing bacteria and other types of pathogenic microorganisms who can be used also for treatment of water. It showed also promising biocidal activity, again, is the macrofoulants, but, and the most important thing, it is less toxic than the chemical uh, uh, commercially available biocide to, towards non-target organisms like that of isopods, amphipods, and decapods. So we, in conclusion, we have managed to reach for efficient, eco-friendly, low-cost corrosion inhibitors and biocide. We have managed also to prepare green zinc, zinc oxide nanomaterial nanoparticle from the water extract of watermelon which has been applied in a mix of that of the fluoroapatite produced from animal bone as a biocide for sulfate reducing bacteria this diagram show you how can zinc oxide work for as a biocide it penetrates the cell wall of the microorganism producing a, 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 a rodex um, a, excuse me, uh, rhodox substrates, reactive oxygen species, which then leads to damage the DNA, denaturation of the enzymes, and leads to cell damage and less, uh, the leakage of the cell component so the cell can be lysed and died. We have also managed to produce silver night nanoparticles within shape, which is very was very cheap compared with that of the chemically synthesized one, applying that uh, the water extract of orange peels, which has also good bicidal activity against different pathogenic uh, microorganisms in water. The spent waste of mandarin have been, after the production of this silver nanoparticle, have been used for the production of activated carbon with which have different, different applications. Also, these cell green synthesized nanoparticles have been applied for the, uh, the degradation or the killing of the mic, um, microorganisms uh, uh, isolated from aerobic bacteria from real oil field biofilm. We have also managed to produce silver nanoparticle using the microorganisms like that of trichoderma used in the fermentation process for, uh, for saccharification of in the bioethanol production process. This silver nano, green synthesized silver nanomaterial has a good bicidal activity against SRP, leading to cell leakage and damage. This also the diagram show you how it can work on the cell uh, SRP reducing bacteria cells. We have also managed using another type of fungus, fungus that has been used as a waste biomass from the uh, bioestin fermentation process to produce a cobalt oxide with a super ferromagnetic behavior, which has also many different applications. One of them, it can act as a uh, biocide for pathogenic microorganisms. Even algae, whatever, micro or macro, have a different application to achieve the circular economy. It can be used for the prime uh, for the treatment of wastewater in general. We have also a, a now a, a project nationally funded product in our lab for the application of algae for water treatment in a, in a full integrated process, producing bio oil, bio refineries in general, bioplastics and the leopard for the biodiesel production, carbohydrates for bioethanol, natural dyes, food supplements and antioxidant and the spent waste biomass can be used as a biosurf fertilizer, animal feather fish, and even the spent waste biomass can be used as a bioabsorption in the bioabsorption reactor for treatment of water and to produce water for use hydroelectricity generation and the irrigation of certain crops and energy crops. We have our own isolate from microalgae, which were capable of degrading polyaromatic compounds and at the same time produce levels for biodiesel production and other value products at the product like that of dyes, chlorophyll A, B, and the carotenoids. We have worked on spirulina platensis for producing different value added products which can be applied in food industry, cosmetics, and pharmaceutical industry, and it can be also used as a food supplement in an animal fed and produce lipid and, uh, for production of biodiesel and glycerol. We have also working now on macroalgae because macroalgae has it's a blooming uh, time all over the year. Uh, sometime uh, for in winter, uh, sorry, in autumn, uh, season and some uh, some other types of macroalgae bloom in the spring region, spring season. Moreover, there are other macroalgae which destroy our coral reefs. So usually we should uh, harvest this macroalgae 
Otherwise, it will destroy also our shorelines and destroys our fish population, if it, especially during the blooming season, and also destroy our coral reefs. We take this macroalgae, as we can see, and produce different value-added products like enzymes, sugars for bioethanol, and bio oil, and also metal oxide and value-added products like that of carrageenan, alginate, agar, and, and some types of dyes and antioxidants. This our work. We have managed to produce bioethanol from sargassum. We have also managed to produce alginate that can be used as an immobilizing matrix for enhancing the biodegradation of uh, poly water pollutants. We have also managed to, to extract alginate and use it for immobilizing matrix for enhancing the rate of bioethanol fermentation process. So in conclusion, food waste is a big opportunity towards the, uh, the achievement of the SDGs goal. Lignocellulosic waste is also a big opportunity towards achieving the SDG goals. And also the application of bioethanol fermentation by mass waste on industrial scale will decrease the load on the other units in the primary, secondary, and tertiary wastewater treatment, as it can absorb different organic compounds, inorganic anions and cations, in addition to heavy metals. It will also make the treatment process more energy efficient as it will decrease or even eliminate the energy requirement for the dissolved air flotation unit, for example, which can be used for the removal of oil and gas from wastewater. The operating cost can be also decreased through the decrease the use of chemicals and reagents needed for coagulation, sedimentation, and CO2 removal. It will also reduce the water consumption used for dilution of high salinity water to be safely discharged on open water streams. Moreover, the re reuse of water in the industrial process in general will decrease the overall water consumption and is beneficial to save our water resources and overcome the worldwide water scarcity problem. The use of the spent waste and effluents for bioethanol production process to produce different value-added products will decrease the overall cost of the bioethanol production. The use of waste biomass as a catalyst and waste oils as a feedstock in biodiesel production produce process will decrease the overall cost of biodiesel production. Using heterogeneous catalysts produced from waste biomass of, of, of biodiesel production eliminate the water consumption used in the washing step. In the uh, in the by the, in the uh, conventional uh, applying homogeneous catalyst for biodiesel production, using agro-industrial waste as co-substrate for water treatment and bio-upgrading of transportation fuels is very beneficial for the uh, from the economic point of view. Second and third generation biofuels are the mandates nowadays. Nanobiotechnology are the sustainable, fashionable applied research nowadays. Sustainable eco-friendly recruitment of biomass for clean fuel production and waste water treatment have positive impact on national economy, human health, environment, industrial and energy sector, achieving the 17 goals of sustainability, achieving the, the, the concept of circular economy and the three pillars of sustainability, economy, society and the environment. Briefly produce alternative green fuel, reduce the dependency on foreign fuel, create green energy industry, produce green catalyst corrosion inhibitors biocide, Issuing less greenhouse gas emissions and toxins and noxes, manage to pro the problem of climate change, overcome most of the waste uh, management problem is in an economic way, preserve our food supply chain, preserve our water resources can help indirectly to mitigate the problem of COVID pandemic. Wastewater treatment in, in a cost-effective manner also can be achieved. Open up huge market for recycling of waste. This would significantly reduce unemployment air, water, and soil pollution, health problem, desertification, food problem, water scarcity. So my recommendation is to increase the awareness of the importance of waste recycling in general to save our earth and increase the awareness of the concept of circular economy and how we can achieve it by applying the waste by mass in general, because waste, it wills. Gather all the information for the available resources to be reused. Gather all the information of the problems we're facing from water scarcity or from pollution. Analyze the gathered information. Put your vision and the plan in a very cost-effective way and, and with, a, with a solution, suggested to use sustainable and eco-friendly solution. Implement a plan and see the reflection. Think green, live green, try to think out of the box to save our environment, save our airs, because recycling and the possibility of the recycling are endless, we can, by applying the concept of recycling in general, to save our environment and we will be always better tomorrow and reach sustainability by applying 
eco-friendly and sustainable solution for water and green reply and producing clean fuel. So thank you, and I'm waiting for any question if you would like.